Well, it's been a long road, but we're finally here. Behold. It might not look like much, but uh, the alternative title of this video might be Six Gamers, One Graphics Card. <laughs> this is an NVIDIA Tesla. This is a $10,000 graphics card. Uh, it's, it's basically one generation old at this point, but it's still insane. There's no, there's no video output on this graphics card. That's because this card is designed for use in the data center. Now, it's got 32 gigs of insanely fast HBM2 memory. I mean, it's a Tesla V100. It's just, it's completely insane. It's twin brother is currently in another system. We did a video on that. It's the Deep Cool Quad Stellar. Yeah, remember that? Well, that's running an Epic 7551. Well, I've upgraded since then. I've upgraded to two Epic systems, two Epic servers. It's gonna be a cluster. We're halfway there. But I'm happy to report all the technology is working. This is running heaven on, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's talk about uh, the stuff that sort of underpins this first because maybe that'll make more sense and be more interesting. All right, first up, we did a video a little while ago talking about, you know, what are the possibilities in terms of VMware for virtualization and AMD's Epic platform and being able to run a bunch of games all at once under a bunch of virtual machines on that platform. Now with a single graphics card, you know, a normal graphics card, you get a fantastically ancient GTX 660 Ti, which is a little bit of an homage to the new 1660 Ti, but we've come full circle. It's one graphics card. It's got outputs. You can run one thing at a time on it. Well, NVIDIA has something that they call Grid and it's a whole other suite of complication. And Grid will let you run uh, multiple virtual machines and share a single graphics card. And so that works really well. It's not just VMware, you can also use Citrix or a combination of VMware and Citrix. Those work really well together. AMD has a similar technology. Of course, AMD's technology is based on SRIOV, single root IO virtualization. And that's also the standard that Intel is going with. Now, single root IO virtualization has been used with network cards. So like if you're running a server farm and you have a bunch of virtual machines, you can have one super awesome, you know, just the most badass network adapter ever, a hundred gigabit adapter. But if that hundred gig adapter supports SRIOV, then you can pass that adapter through to all of your virtual machines and they'll physically have that adapter present in them. If you follow level one, we've also done VFIO where we've shown you how to take two physical graphics cards, you know, two graphics cards, a little bit more recent than the, uh, the 660, of course, and run one graphics card for your host computer and one graphics card for a gaming virtual machine. We do that with Linux. So you can run Linux as a host OS and Windows as a virtual machine. And at that point, you can basically run anything because the host CPU is shared. And there's a lot of hardware extensions that make that possible. Well, with modern graphics cards, it's really just down to software. I mean, even with AMD's Vega, the SRIOV capabilities are there in silicon, but they're only turned on in the higher end cards. In this case, this is the older Fire Pro S7150, but uh, you know, the, the Vega and well, Radeon Instinct and, and those cards have those SRIOV extensions. So it's two different ways to get there. These are Windows VMs. These are just ordinary Windows VMs running under VMware. And the setup for that is actually fairly complicated. Right now, all of these are running on a single host, but like I say, I'm planning to build a second host. Once I've got a second host built, we can do all sorts of really fun, exciting, interesting things like having failover. We can also share the resources. So right now, if I wanna run eight gaming VMs with 32 gigs of HBM, each one of those is gonna have four gigs of dedicated VRAM. If we run a cluster, then I've got two cards and the load could be split between the two nodes. So that if something goes wrong or a server is starting to crash or something, those VMs can be migrated by VMware from one host to another. And when that migration happens, then everything is running on one graphics card. Or I can elect to give all of my VMs eight gigabytes of VRAM and half of them will be running on one server and half of them will be running on another server but as far as the clients go, they don't really know or care. That's all handled by something called VMware Horizon. Let's take a look at the clients because all of these client machines, they're all a little bit different. So here we have Heaven. Heaven, you know, 
running at a full 60 FPS, actually a little over 60 FPS, like 67, 68. If you want to run an interactive game or something like that, it's perfectly fine. It runs perfectly well at 60 FPS. You know, anything that you could run on a 1080 certainly is going to run about as well. Got 32 gigs of VRAM, but uh, only eight for this particular virtual machine. So I can run up to four VMs on a single Tesla, but with two Teslas, I could run eight. Now the thin client here is actually from EVGA. Yeah, EVGA. There's a name that you've probably heard before. I mean, they make graphics cards, right? This is actually a Teradici thin client. So this is PC over IP. This is the type of, you know, sort of interface that you might find in a business for doing virtual desktop infrastructure. It's from, from EVGA. It's got dual DVI. You could run, you know, two DVI monitors. It's got USB. You can pass through USB peripherals. It has headphone, microphone. You can do video conferencing. It's pretty much all that you would need for a true VDI infrastructure. Now for this machine, it's a little more troubling. This is a Surface Pro 3 with the ancient CPU that I was telling you about. Now when you're gaming, you've got to enable the relative mouse movement. Otherwise, you're going to have a bad time. Now, could you do this with six graphics cards and one host computer instead of having to rely on VMware and NVIDIA's grid and massive amounts of software licensing that has to go with that? I mean, that software licensing is not inexpensive. The answer is yes. Yes, you absolutely could set it up with multiple video cards and be good to go. In fact, that works fine under Linux today. In fact, Linus has done that. You might remember six gamers, one PC, and then, or no, seven gamers, one PC, and then six editors, one PC. That's that's running Linux or Unraid. And, you know, he's done a really good job setting up, you know, the dual Xeon server that the editors are gonna run from and crazy enhanced Titan graphics cards and stuff like that. You don't really see that too much in the enterprise until Google Stadia. And if you notice Google Stadia and some of the, uh, you know, some of the Stadia-like services that have come out and been advertising lately, they're using gaming graphics cards in the data center for virtual machines. And it, it doesn't really matter. It's like, no, nah, we can buy one dedicated graphics card for every user that's going to use our system, and we'll just, you know, route them to the appropriate system. You can totally do that even with Horizon, but the NVIDIA drivers frown upon that. If they detect that they're running in a situation like with VMware or other virtualization, they'll actually generate a code 43 error and the drivers will not load. Now if you've got a Quadro or a Tesla card or something that is you know made for the data center, then it'll work. At the end of the day, the hardware is very close to the same, if not identical. I mean the VRAM is going to vary a little bit, but in terms of like um, what Linus did with the RTX graphics cards, that's actually a better situation in terms of performance and in terms of the per user experience because you got to think they're plugging the monitors and graphics cards directly into each uh, video card the same way that we do with VFI. Of course, you know if you're if you're an individual doing VFI, you only have the one graphics card. But still, this is a great exercise to learn VMware. If you come through this setup on your home machine and you set up a Raspberry Pi that you connect to with your VMware cluster, uh, I'm pretty sure that you can get your VMware certification. No problem, no questions asked. Now, before we do benchmarking or any of the nitty gritty details like that, VMware is a little, um, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm gonna make sure that I can clear the benchmark numbers so that we can talk about performance and specifics and things like that. But I can just tell you, I mean, if you've got seven RTX graphics cards versus two Teslas, the, the, the RTX graphics cards, they're gonna win. I mean, it's gonna be a better situation. But it's different technologies for different setups. This type of setup is more like what you would have in the enterprise. And some of you guys for work, you may even use VDI, virtual desktop infrastructure. That's what this is. Although most VDI infrastructure is set up to try to save as much money on hardware and licensing as possible. So a lot of people have a really crap VDI performance. I mean, there's gonna be a lot of people in the comments that are checking in and saying, yep, can confirm we're on VDI and sometimes it takes me like 20 minutes to log in. With this setup, even using Horizon to create new VMs when I log in, it only takes about three seconds, like from the initial VM boot up, and it's like somebody is ready to log in to a new VM from nothing. There's no VM, it's not created at all. Horizon snapshots that master VM, snapshot's not really the right word, but Horizon clones that VM, and 
for that waiting person and then you're good to go. Now, like with Google Stadia, what comes up is, oh man, what about the latency? You're encoding, decoding, doing all this stuff and it's flying over the network, there's gonna be tons of latency. Well, we've got the modified mouse and we've got all these different machines. We got a Raspberry Pi, which is pretty much worst case scenario in terms of compute horsepower for this kind of stuff. But the Raspberry Pi does have a hardware H.264 decoder. So we've got hardware encoders on the Tesla and NVIDIA is actually very, very good with their hardware encoders. They're, they're industry leading right now in terms of like their hardware uh, encoding for multiple sessions like we're running here. And so that hardware encoder decoder really cuts down the latency, makes it a lot more stable and makes it more consistent, which is why you can actually have a pretty decent gaming experience on a Raspberry Pi. Now VMware is not designed for gaming and I'm not recommending it for gaming and you should totally not set up your own you know, cyber cafe with gaming. It doesn't make economic sense. The technology is not really there. But if you are doing something like fluid simulation or CAD or any kind of high assurance job where you want to maintain control of the intellectual property, then you absolutely can do it at 60 FPS with insanely high performance with top end Tesla cards. And yes, you can add six or seven or 10 or 20 Tesla cards to a server or pool of servers so that you've got that kind of graphics compute horsepower available to all of the clients that might be using those virtual machines in your cluster. But back to gaming. What are the brass tacks latency numbers for gaming? Well, we've got our modified mouse. This modified mouse, when you click the mouse button, it lights up and it's hardwired in there. So there's no delay from the time you press the button to the time that the computer registers the click and you do the round trip. So we've got Witcher 3 that we're using. We've got the Surface 3. Now this is a Surface 3 with four gigs of memory and the Core M3. Like this is the crappiest Surface 3 that you can possibly get. And it's on Wi-Fi. We've already got like three to six milliseconds of latency between the Surface Pro 3 and the VMware machine that's actually hosting this. And as you can see, the latency numbers are actually pretty good. I don't know that I would, you know, if I were like a champion Twitch FPS person, if I were fatality, I'm not, if I were fatality, uh, you know, this would be really annoying and terrible, but if I'm just playing Witcher 3, I don't know that this bothers me. Now, if we move this server to the data center and we're talking about 10 or 20 or 30 milliseconds of latency, it might be a different story. That might be a follow up video. I don't know. But as you can see, just testing it here, even on the Raspberry Pi, like the delay that you see from the Raspberry Pi, it's actually pretty good. I mean, all things considered, it's running over the network, but there you go. Now, what if you want more than 60 FPS performance? Well, you can get more than 60 FPS performance, but it's gonna be at a cost of the other clients because all the encoder and all the machinery here is designed for 30 or 60 FPS, depending on what you pick. Now, I've configured VMware and Horizon and all the accoutrement to be 60 FPS, but 30 FPS is an option, 120 FPS is an option. But if you're gonna run 120 FPS, then it's gonna cut the number of clients that you can manage in half. Now, what about performance of the Adobe Creative Suite? Uh, that's a story for another day. I'm Wendell, this is Level One, and I'm signing out.